Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Katrina Olson. I'm a senior assurance manager with the firm Whittlesey. And today I'd like to talk to you about contributed non financial assets. Uh, hopefully, you're aware that in 2020, the Financial Accounting Standards Board issued an accounting standards update, number 2020 07, that covers presentation and disclosure by not for profit entities for contributed non-financial assets. And this is more commonly called gifts in kind. First, just a little bit about myself. Um, you can find uh, my information on the firm's website, which is wadvising.com slash advisors. Uh, you can uh, have my phone number and email there in case you have any questions for me. And just a little bit about myself, I've been with the firm 20 years now, and I do specialize in not-for-profits. So the ASU uh, is effective for annual periods beginning after June 15th, 2021. So what that means is if you were a June 30 fiscal year end, uh, you should have already implemented the standard for 2022. If you are a calendar year, uh, December year end, then you should be implementing it right now um, in your current financial statements for your FY22. So early adoption was permitted. Um, at this point, you know, we're kind of past that part. You do need to implement now if you haven't already. And retrospective application is required in this case. So, so when you issue your FY22 financials. And if you have comparative statements, you do need to restate your FY21 column to reflect this, this application of this new ASU. So what was the FASB's objective in issuing this accounting standards update? So, their goal is to increase transparency about contributed non-financial assets through enhancements to presentation and disclosure. I think it's important to pause a moment here to emphasize that this ASU did not make any changes to revenue recognition. So the only change is to the presentation and the disclosures in the financial statements. That being said, uh, you know, this gives us a good opportunity to kind of refresh ourselves on the accounting, um, you know, for gifts in kind and how you do recognize the revenue. So we will talk about that a bit during this presentation. So what is a non-financial asset? So this can include land and buildings, use, you know, free use of facilities or utilities, donated materials and supplies, intangible assets, and also services. And again, this is generally called gifts in kind. And so throughout this presentation, I'll generally refer to these non-financial assets as gifts in kind. So according to GAAP, donated goods and services are recognized in the financial statements if they create or enhance a non-financial asset or if they require specialized skills and are provided by an individual possessing those skills and if the entity would need to purchase if not already provided through donation. So these are very important concepts. Uh, you know, most nonprofits, of course you have volunteers, but do you recognize all those volunteer services as revenue on your financial statements? The answer is no. Uh, you know, generally because most, in most cases, volunteers are not providing um, a specialized skill. And we'll talk about this in a little more detail um, on the next slide. So here's some examples of services that would be considered in-kind donations that you would recognize as revenue. So legal services, um, accounting services, IT, transportation, uh, certain consulting services, 
use of office space, um, notably media or airtime, like a public service announcement that's provided free of charge, and also administrative services. So again, you would recognize these services as revenue if the person providing the service has that specialized skill. And also, as, as we noted in the definition, if, you, if your nonprofit would have to purchase those services if not already provided. So that's that's a key um, key factor as well to remember. So let's go through some examples of property or goods. So some property and goods that are typically donated and considered in kind um, are food, clothing, office supplies or furniture, medical supplies, uh, notably donated items used in a fundraiser or auction are uh, within the standard and should be recorded to revenue. And then also intangible property such as patents, copyrights, and securities. So now that we know, you know what, what is an in-kind contribution or a, a non-financial asset, you know, how do we record these? So you would record any donated items as revenue upon receipt at fair value. So it's important to establish in your general ledger a separate in-kind revenue and potentially also in-kind expense account within your chart of accounts to keep these in-kind tra transactions organized and transparent. You might want to consider adding multiple in-kind revenue and expense accounts if you have numerous types of in-kind donations. So let's talk about journal entries. So let's say you're recording an in-kind donation for free use of office space. And the fair value, if you were actually paying for that office space, is $40,000. In this case, you would record a debit to rent expense for $40,000, and you would credit in-kind contribution revenue for $40,000. Again, if you have other kinds of donated services, let's say you have legal services, then you would debit legal expense in that case. So let's talk a little bit more about fair value. So the definition of fair value according to GAAP is the price that would be received to sell an asset in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. And then a, an important factor um, you'll see in a few moments when we go through footnote disclosures is the principal market. So the definition of a principal market is the market with the greatest volume and level at, of activity for the asset. And this will make a little more sense when we look at some examples. So if there is no principal market, the most advantageous market for an asset is used when you're determining fair value. All right, so why? You know, why is transparency and reporting gifts and kind so important? And why did the FASI release this accounting standards update? So nonprofits of all sizes receive and use significant amounts of gifts and kind. And the value of gifts and kind can impact key metrics for nonprofits, such as your program expense ratio and your liquidity. And it also impacts the financial and programmatic sustainability of the nonprofit. Um, and you know, I like to tell people, you know, you want to give your donors credit. So, you know, it's it's easy to overlook, um, you know, since these are not cash transactions it can be easy to overlook them and, and forget to record them as revenue and the related expense in your general ledger. But, you know, one motivator is, you you know, you want to give your donors credit for these donations and, and, um, and reflect them in your audited financial statements. All 
All right, so we've talked a little bit about the revenue recognition and the definitions and, and journal entries. So now we're getting really into the meat of this accounting standards update. So, you know, what has changed? What, what is new and different that we need to implement going forward? So there's really two components to this ASU. The first is a presentation requirement. There is a requirement to now present as a separate line item contributed non-financial assets in the statement of activities apart from contributions of cash or other financial assets. Now, you may have already had a separate line item for in-kind contributions. So if that's the case, you know, you're all set. You really don't need to, to make any other change to your statement of activities. Also, if, you know, another consideration is, let's say you have $1,000 of in-kind contributions. If 1,000 bucks is immaterial to your organization, you know, you can, you can, um, you know, elect to not, uh, to not create a separate line item for that. So, you know, use your judgment, but the new requirement is to present a separate line item and disaggregate these non-cash transactions from cash contributions. So secondarily, there's new disclosure requirements. There's, there's a couple requirements. So one is to disaggregate the amount of contributed non-financial assets received by category. And I have an example here, you know, we're kind of disaggregating different types of transactions, such as rent, supplies, food, or legal services. So in addition, we have a number of new qualitative disclosures that we have to apply. So for each major category of contributed non-financial assets, we have the following disclosure requirements. So one is whether your these donated assets were monetized or utilized during the reporting period. So an example of monetizing, let's say you got a donated truck. If you turn around and sell the truck, then you, you monetized. Uh, if you choose to keep the truck and use it within your programs, then you are utilizing that donation. So if you did elect to utilize an in-kind contribution, you do need to describe the program or other activity in which that asset is being used. You also need to disclose your organization's policy for monet monetizing rather than utilizing contributed non-financial assets if if that's applicable for you so for example you know your organization may just have a policy of selling any non-cash items so for example if your nonprofit receives donated securities like stocks or bonds you know instead of keeping those stocks and bonds you may elect to sell them and take the cash um, same with the truck analogy that I just used. You also need to describe any donor restrictions. So keeping with the truck example, if the donor said this can only be used for your Meals on Wheels program, then you, know, you would need to disclose that in the footnotes. Another new requirement is to describe the valuation techniques and inputs used to arrive at fair value. And then finally, describe the principal market or most advantageous market used to arrive at fair value measurements. So those last couple um, about the fair value measures, I have a few examples later that will help make more sense of this. All right, so first example, uh, this, was, this is an example of what your new footnote could look like. So for the year ended June 30, 2022, gifts in kind recognized within the statement of activities include the following. 
And of course, if you're issuing comparative statements, you should have a second column for 2021 next to 2022. So in this example, we had a donated building for $400,000, supplies of $70,000, and food of $57,000. That brings us to a total of $528,000. So then presumably, if you go to your statement of activities, you'll see a separate line item, in-kind contribution revenue, with that $528,000 uh, reported. Next, we have a footnote, the disclosure um, about fair value for the building. So, so the disclosure says the fair value of the building was estimated on the basis of comparable sales prices in the real estate market of the metropolitan area in which the building is located. So if, you know, this is more of a generic example. So if let's say you're in the New Haven area, you could say, comparable sales prices in the real estate market of the New Haven area in which the building is located. So this is an example of how you would disclose the valuation technique and input and the principal market. Another example is for the supplies. We say that the contributed supplies and the food are valued at the estimated fair value on the basis of estimates of wholesale values that would be received for selling similar products in the US. You know, so what you can see, you know, principal market, we're even being as specific as to say in the US. In terms of valuation techniques and inputs, we're using wholesale values. So, you know, an easy way might be, you know, you say what 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 would these supplies be? Uh, valued at if I had to go buy them in, on Amazon or, or go down to Walmart. So the next example is donor imposed restrictions. So in this case, we're saying $15,000 of supplies were restricted for use by the donor for use in the animal rescue program. And then finally, we disclose that the organization does not sell donated gifts in kind and only distributes goods for program use. So that speaks to our requirement to whether we monetize or utilize donated items. All right, the next example uh, is focus on services. So in this case, uh, you know, we're disclosing we had veterinary services of $73,000. And the new disclosure would read that we recognize those veterinary services uh, based on estimated fair value uh, for rates for similar services. So in this case, you know, hopefully the vet is giving the nonprofit some paperwork, you know, or some kind of acknowledgement of what their standard rates are. And that's how you would value that. Uh, but you do need to disclose that in your footnotes. And then finally, we have an example on monetization. So in this case, we're looking at uh, vehicles. So this nonprofit received vehicles valued at roughly $127,000. We say that the organization's policy is to sell all contributed vehicles immediately upon receipt at auction or for salvage unless the vehicle is restricted for use in a specific program by the donor. Then we say no vehicles received during the period were restricted for use. All vehicles were sold and valued according to the actual cash proceeds on their disposition. So that's a great example of monetizing the donated asset. So you could use any of these three examples as a guide for preparing your own footnote disclosure. Um, again, you may have already had some information in your footnotes, hopefully, uh, in the past about in-kind contributions. But as you can see, there, there are some additional requirements going forward. 
I'm hoping that this uh, this brief overview has been helpful to you today. And as I said, please feel free to uh, reach out if you have any questions. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.